BestBookBits.com presents The Little Book of Common Sense Investing by John C. Bogle. The Little Book of Common Sense Investing is the classic guide to getting smart about the market. Legendary mutual fund pioneer John C. Bogle reveals his key to getting more out of investing, low-cost index funds. Bogle describes the simplest and most effective investment strategy for building wealth over the long term, buy and hold at very low cost. A mutual fund that tracks a broad stock market index such as the S&P 500. A portfolio focused on index funds is the only investment that effectively guarantees you fair share of the market returns. This strategy is favored by Warren Buffett, who said this about Bogle. If a statue is ever erected to honor the person who has done the most for American investors, the hands-down choice should be Jack Bogle. Bogle shows you how to make index investing work for you and help you achieve your financial goals. While index investing allows you to sit back and let the market do the work for you, too many investors trade frantically, turning a winner's game into a loser's game. The Little Book of Common Sense Investing is a solid guidebook to your financial future. The written and audio summary can be found on our website, bestbookbits.com. So without further ado, I bring the book summary of The Little Book of Common Sense Investing. This summary will help you learn what is an index fund, why these funds are trustworthy investments, how the returns of these funds compare to other funds and individual stocks, the way emotions, short run, mindset, and admin fee impact your investments, and why you must avoid funds traded on the exchange. Takeaways. If you invest in a single stock, there's high risk. In contrast, index funds don't have any risk. It's because they invest in the whole stock market. A typical index fund produces enormous returns in the long run, thanks to the power of compounding. Capitalism is a game of positive sum. Attempts to outdo the share market is a zero-sum game. Here some win, while some lose. Due to cost and risks, investors can't beat the market return in the long run. Very few money managers outdo long-run market returns. Overall share market returns reduced with the increase in share buying and selling. The change in returns are because of the emotional aspect of investing. It's not related to the rise in dividends and earnings. Share market wrongly focuses on short-run emotional outcomes. In the long-term, management fees lessen overall returns. The Little Book of Common Sense Investing Summary Intelligent Investing Benjamin Graham wrote The Intelligent Investor in 1949. Graham was his generation's wisest fund manager. Hence, his book is also a legend of wise investment advice. He says that many investors don't have any professional knowledge or training. Consequently, they don't check a company's worth and its stock value, nor can these investors forecast a firm's share value in the future. Thus, he advises investors to be conservative in their choice. He recommends putting money in a diverse portfolio, and the stocks in such portfolio must be held onto in the long run. Graham warns investors against depending too much on brokers. He says that those brokers' commissions conflicts with the client's long-term goals. Graham explains that the odds are never in the favor of the investor. He writes positively about mutual funds, but also points out something about mutual funds. From 1937 to 1947, a typical mutual fund gave 3% less return than the S&P 500 index. As Graham, investors should stick to conservative and standard types of investments, no doubt his advisors are as sensible today as during his time. The world's first index fund. The first index fund for ordinary investors was introduced in 1976. This brought to life Graham's practical philosophy of investing. The index fund's name was Vanguard 500. It invested in the 500 firms that were on the S&P 500. The Vanguard Group, a no-commission mutual fund firm, promoted this fund. The core idea behind index funds is straightforward. Index funds have the highest number of diversified shares. These funds denote a portfolio holding a range of stocks which compromise an index. When the businesses in the index pay dividends, their firm's value grows, and so do their share prices. Overall, such growth increases the total value of an index. Hence, as all the businesses in a specific index grow, investors holding those funds prosper too. American capitalism, the ultimate growth market. The US share market has come a long way on the growth path. From 1900 to 2005, the average yearly return rate of all American stocks is 9.6%. This is similar to the 9.5% annual business investment return. The difference is 0.1% is because of speculation. When one compounds these returns, the outcomes are surprising. 
each dollar invested in 1900 increased to fifteen thousand and sixty two dollars by 2005 yes inflation did reduce the actual growth to 793 but many investors would still be happy to see their money grow 800 times market fluctuations for some periods share market returns did beat the earnings growth and dividends this was during the late 1990s and late 1920s but eventually such returns had to come back to ground and the landing is often a severe crash so what accounts for such swings nearly always market swings are unrelated to investment economics instead they're direct outcome of bringing emotions into investment the price slash earning pe ratio is proof growth markets always have high pe's in contrast bear markets always have low pe's there's a pattern to the market swings as history suggests after a decade of positive speculative returns comes the decade of negative ones want proof consider the lows in the 1910s followed by the boom in 1920s or the dark period of the 1940s accompanied by the roaring 1950s this pattern fits a statistical concept i.e revision to the mean in the long run real share values tend to even out they monitor basic business investment returns hence investor perceptions don't have much meaning when it comes to a business's real value it's because those perceptions correlate with speculative short-run returns speculation is often irrational the short-term share price fall and rise depending on emotional elements these don't have any relation with the business's real value prior performance is a poor predictor of the future don't rely on very high returns increasing because of the speculation they aren't a sound guide for future returns they're no guide at all it's an impossible task to predict the rise and fall in a firm's current value some investors may win while others will lose the share market is a roll of the dice game hence a wise investor must see speculative high returns with distrust equity returns in the long run don't depict emotions instead they reflect economics but short-term market losses or gains are only about emotions this factor makes direct investments in a specific stock risky eliminating the risk american companies have amazingly strong business basics hence investing in buy and hold in u.s firms is a wise move the ideal way to broadly invest is by buying an index fund this covers the whole market your plan must be to buy the entire market and then hold on to it for the long run the investment principle is a sure win in contrast speculative investments will lose over the same time frame standard and Poor's 500 index the s p 500 reflects a common share market portfolio it denotes the 500 most prominent firms in the us these firms make a list on the grounds of their market capitalization hence it's a cap weighted index the s p 500 depict 80 percent 80 percent of all american stocks based on the total market value fund managers use it as an ideal standard for measuring their investing failure slash success there's another important measure it's the dow jones will she total stock market index this represents around 5,000 stocks covering the s p 500 in the long term the returns from both of these indexes are similar returns from index funds on these two indexes outdo equity returns over time for example think of a 1976 buy of a thousand shares at 15 dollars per share this will value at 461,771 dollars in 30 years in the first index fund of the world hence buy and hold a broad diverse index fund for a long time this will undoubtedly make you a winner what about cost share market investors hardly get the returns they expect it's not just because that of the lousy stock choice but it's also due to the very high expenses these cover management fees broker commission sale loads and other promotional expenses when choosing individual shares investors see a zero-sum game but they're playing a loser's game after all the costs are subtracted the average yearly cost is 1.5 percent of the total investment for an individual investor such cost doubles up for the active in traders these include management fees and operating cost investors in mutual funds also pay 1.5 percent in cost besides their sales charges also have an extra 0.5 percent so let's suppose a person holding the stock for five years then its sales charge will be one percent plus at another one percent yearly to cover the portfolio's turnover cost these costs matter in share investing the issue is that investors can't measure their total expenses correctly it's because several costs stay hidden 
This covers taxes on gains in the stock market. These costs become a considerable amount when seen over the long term. An example. For example, think of a mutual fund investor investing $10,000 at the age of 22. He holds mutual funds for many years. Let's assume an 8% yearly average return plus 2.5% yearly average cost. This way, the net return is 5.5%. Hence, the investment of $10,000 will become $469,000 in 50 years. But on subtracting cost, the fund's total value will be $145,400. We haven't included inflation yet. In this example, cost use up 70% of market accumulation. This is even more frustrating as the investor takes all the risk, and he's also accountable for the whole investment capital. Hence, the example shows that mutual fund investor isn't likely to gain significant returns, but many fund managers will benefit a lot. Cost and the index funds. For index funds, the cost picture is entirely different. Index funds are very cheap as compared to direct investments in the stock market or mutual funds. The expense ratio for a low-cost index fund is only 0.15% yearly, plus these funds are also tax efficient. Index funds are better than other types of mutual funds in many ways. Fund managers manage all mutual funds, and they get paid high. The issue is that all such money managers compete against one another. Hence, the investor doesn't make any real gains. Some managers will win, while others will lose. There's evidence to prove that mutual fund returns don't match the share market. Hence, because of their high cost, mutual funds are a loser's game. A word on the exchange traded funds, ETFs. The index fund market is quite mature now. Hence, many fund firms are launching new products to stand out. These include the exchange traded funds, ETFs. Trading ETF shares on a short run basis are possible, but it's like a wolf clad in sheep's skin. Investors can't compare ETF trading returns with its real returns. ETFs are costly, plus they're meant for speculative purposes, hence they don't meet the basic index fund requirement, so avoid them unless you plan on buying and holding. Successful investing is all about common sense. Successful investing is all about common sense. How index funds should fit into your overall investment portfolio. Do you belong to the higher tax bracket? Yes, then put your money in a quasi-index portfolio of high-quality municipal bonds or else invest all your money in an all-American share market index portfolio. You may also invest fully in an all-American bond market index. Yes, index funds are also present for bonds. An index fund is a secure investment if held over the long run. The little book of common sense investing quotes. Most investors, both institutional and individual, will find that the best way to own common stocks is through an index fund that charges minimal fees. Warren Buffett. Successful investing is all about common sense. The intelligent investor will minimize to the bare bones the cost of the financial intermediation. The higher the level of the investment activity, the greater the cost of the financial intermediation and taxes, the less the net return that the business owners as a group receive. Fund investors are confident that they can always easily select superior fund managers. They are wrong. The more the managers take, the less the investors make. The more the managers take, the less the investors make. Mutual funds charge 2% per year, and then brokers switch people between funds, costing another 3 or 4 percentage points. The general public is getting a terrible product from the professionals, Charles T. Munger. Investors as a group fail to learn the returns that our corporations generate through their dividends and earning growth, ultimately reflected in the prices of their stocks. It is investment returns, the earnings and dividends generated by American business that are ultimately entirely responsible for the returns delivered in the stock market. The expectations market is about speculation. The real market is about investing. By periodically investing in an index fund, the know-nothing investor can actually outperform most investment professionals. Paradoxically, when dumb money acknowledges its limitations, it ceases to be dumb. Warren Buffett Owning American businesses through a broadly diversified index fund is not only logical, but to say at least, incredibly productive. And that's a wrap on The Little Book of Common Sense Investing by John C. Bogle. Check out our YouTube channel with now over 450 
video book summaries uploaded previously, and also check out our website, bestbookbits.com, where you can find the written summary and download in the PDF version in video categories such as biographies, business and marketing, habits, health, leadership, money, personal development, philosophy, psychology, real estate, relationship, sales, spirituality, success, and time management. If you're into the audio version, check out mixcloud.com forward slash best book bits where you'll find all the audio podcasts to listen to at your pleasure and last and quotes thanks for watching and listening hope you got something out of this go out there have yourself an amazing day and invest in index mutual funds take care bye bye